What is going on, everyone? It's Tuesday night, so that means it's time for Conversations That Matter. I'm your host, Steve, real name, no gimmicks, here on the Hold Up TV. And tonight, man, we got a banger of a topic. I'm so glad to have my two panel members with me. You're probably noticing that this is a recorded show going on right now. Typically, I do my thing going live, but I felt like for this conversation, I didn't want any distractions, and I didn't want to waste these brothers' time. So without any further ado... The topic on the table tonight is thug culture versus whitewashed blacks. What is more harmful for the community? Joining me in this <laughs> epic discussion in which I'm sure we will all be promptly eliminated from the internet and kicked off the shade room and all other black spaces on the internet. I have my good friend, DJ Sensi Star, partner in crime, uh, amazing producer, content creator, representing if he's comfortable with me saying this the comedic science and his perspective on this very uh delicate subject so i got my man since he started tapping in and then down at the bottom misrepresenting but always showing up my man alvin you know pastor soon to be author business owner staple in the community in the la area and as i like to call him the cripping christian you know, only man ever crip walked through the White House before it. Footage is online, folks. It can be found. No, no, it wasn't the White House. It was the, <laughs> it was the Capitol building. Bro. Oh, it was the Capitol yeah. building. My bad. And uh, I'm I'm glad. Thank you, thank you guys for being mm-hmm. here. And uh, how's everybody doing this evening? Oh man, I'm blessed. My, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me on and trust and entrusting me with such a um, a wonderful topic. <laughs> <laughs> I always I always bring the fun. I always bring the fun. I always want to I should have told you guys what we were talking about. I just be like, yeah, we're just gonna talk about black economics and get you up here and hold you up over against the wall. How about you, DJ Sissy Star? How are you doing this evening, my brother? Oh man, I am doing wonderful, doing good, going great, you know. Just happy to be here. All right. I so I like black owned. I like that hat, man. I like I like that hat. So oh, you don't like my LA hat? No, LA, you know what I'm saying? I'm I was there. You know what I'm saying? I was there for yeah. nine years. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Twelve in total by the time I met you. So yeah, the reason I asked these two gentlemen to come on is because I have a close relationship with both these brothers, um, both men that are present in their community doing work, and I have respect for uh, for both of you. Obviously, DJ Sensi Star is my partner in crime over here at the Hold Up TV, and uh, Alvin and I uh, were once in the same profession, and at full disclosure, Alvin was one of the first men to uh, disciple me when I converted to Christianity, and that's where our relationship kicked off. And uh, I've had many conversations with both you gentlemen about a plethora of issues, but I found this one to be extremely important because there are so many things going on, right? As a content creator, as people who exist in this space, Alvin, you have your show with, uh, you know, on, on IG, you know, since you have your show on Mixcloud, I'm sure we've all traveled into these spaces where this conversation is happening in regards to, quote unquote, white wash blacks and then we have another group that is very vocal on the internet you know you can find them occupying spaces like maybe the shade room maybe other places you know right now black youtube is booming you know you have content creators like no jumper giving a platform to even la street culture so you gotta you got street guys coming on telling their story so we want to talk about what's more harmful thug culture or whitewash black so before we get into the hard stuff let me get your definitions of both the things you know uh we'll, we'll start with alvin alvin what is thug culture according to you and what is the whitewashed black culture according to you man you didn't say no no questions no you just, you <laughs> like that right Dude, just uh, like all right so um thug culture first so when i think about so-called thug culture um, if I were to give it a definition from the top of my head, like I'm about to do a freestyle, hmm. um, it would be the culture is a byproduct of um, systemic, uh, suppressive, oppressive white culture. Okay. Okay. And so, so, so that's 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 my my going definition. It may change throughout the. The conversation because you just threw that out there, so I just had to throw something up. But my, um, for whitewash black culture, it would be, um, uh, it would be white culture and, and black skin. Okay, 
Okay. What about you, DJ Sensei Star? Same questions. <laughs> well, you know, I'll also probably start with uh thug culture. For me, thug culture is uh basically like the glorification of you know probably the the negative traits that um I would say the media um and you know, like he was mentioning, the uh, oppressive culture that we've been put in—it's the glorification of those traits. Just you know, super uh, overly masculine, um, aggressive behavior that you know tends to be you know negatively viewed by most people, but accepted within you know a certain community as the appropriate way to be. Okay. Um, for whitewashed. Um, and you know, I'm glad you did switch that because I would hate to have to say this word about a thousand times tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I actually have uh done some research on that, and there was an article I read by someone named uh, I believe his name was Brandon Starko, who's mm -hmm. a writer for a um, um media outlet called Anscape, which is basically like a black owned um multimedia company. Yeah. And I thought he had a great definition that I kind of agree with. It would be like the public performance of, you know, behavior that either excuses um, racial uh, racist behavior from white people or an attempt to assimilate um, yourself into white culture. Um, one thing that he did say that I think stands out uh, largely in his definition of whitewashed um, is that he believes it's a public it has to be a public act and i'm not sure i i believe that to be true but you know i just want to throw that out there since i was kind of quoting his uh definition of it and i and i would agree with both of your brothers definition of it um i know that the conversation is going to go to a, di a few different places but you know as we as we move through the conversation I, I would love to get into the historical context for both those things and you know i did switch it up i was using the word that started with c usually described uh used to describe what people would consider a whitewashed black person obviously one of the most popular nomenclatures is an uncle tom and i was i remember i was talking to uh davinky about this i think you were there that night since that you know historically those stations and those terms so you have coon which was actually like a, a performing arts thing right so it was it was black people in media that did a type of performance where they denigrated themselves to obviously make white masses laugh and that was called cooning right the term itself was I believe if I remember the historical definition and, and there's a bunch and I'm sorry that this is in my algorithm now because I was looking up the root of the word um, was the comparison of raccoons in the south sneaking on people's porches porches and stuff like that and then when we talk about someone that's like an Uncle Tom or aka the house slave obviously if you read Uncle Tom's cabin he's kind of the hero of that story he's not really the uh what they portray him at what the term has been popularized that he actually took one hell of a, a a lashing to protect two female slaves that that got off the plantation and he never gave up their location but i was explaining to davinky that typically when you think about how slaves uncle toms these were people that i think were just as much victims even though they may have picked up the tools of oppression to aid their masters or their captives and I do view it the same way. I want to go on the record that I agree with you guys. I view it the same way for our brothers who are caught up in the, the street strife, as I like to call it, man, who are brought up in uh, what they are presented as the warrior culture, the get it at any cost culture because of circumstance. But I guess the next question, and you guys go wherever you want, if both parties are victims, at what point do the victims start becoming the victimizers and using the tools of the oppressor? I'm a, you know, I don't know if I want to uh, necessarily. Um, I like to think of myself in more thug culture, right? Okay. So I don't think I would want to necessarily uh, be a, a victimizer um, and take what uh, what the uh, oppressive culture has given me or placed on me, and then flip it. I would like to call it a victor. Right, like, how can I take it from being victimized to being a victorious? Right? Okay. How can I take um, what it looks like, you know, for me as you know, thug or or, or coon or whitewash to take that 
and say, how can I flip it to become victorious? Mm. Um, but in order for me to do that, I have to be honest about um, the roots of it, you know, and and that's that's the hard part, Stephen, man. It's, it's the hard part is is the fact that when I look at um, myself, right, when I look in a mirror and I look at myself and being honest with myself, the hard part is saying, you know, I have to undo me. Right. I have to undo my thinking. I have to, um, you know, emotionally, right? I have to historically, emotionally, sp physically, spiritually, I have to undo a lot. And so um, in order for me to, to, to go from um, being a, a victim to being a victor, I have to start with um, like un just breaking down this 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 whole Western idea of who I am, because mm -hmm. both of them on both sides, it's a Western idea of what it looks like to be a thug or a warrior or a soldier. It's a Western idea of what it looks like to be a man. Right. Uh, or, or, or successful. Right. Um, someone who is able to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. That's a Western idea. That's not an African idea. Right. An African idea is we all in this together. It, you know, we 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 pull each other up. Right. There, there's no me pulling myself up by my own bootstraps without me thinking about you. So if I'm pulling myself up by my own bootstraps, I'm actually pulling myself up by the bootstraps of my ancestors. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, I have to undo white thinking, Eurocentric thinking. Um, I have to undo that in order to do what I believe I've been actually placed on this earth to do um, and both sides on both sides of this thing um, where we've been taken out of who we really are and placed into a European concept of what that looks like. And if we get back to our roots, you know, from a, from an African perspective, from even a Christian perspective, it's communal. Mm -hmm. It's never me, myself and I, it's always about us. Right. And so, you know, that for me, in order to go from being a victim to being a victor, I have to get, un, undo this Eurocentric thinking, this whitewashed thinking, this caveman thinking. You said, you said a lot there. <laughs> you said a lot since you want to tap in. Yeah, I, I jump in with this one real quick because I, I uh, agree with pretty much that whole statement you just made. I think um, at the end of the day, it's important to recognize that both of those um, – uh, you know, whether we want to call it a sellout and a thug or, you know, whatever we're going to call it. If they are victims, um, it's almost as if it also became a survival tactic in their environment. Um, so, you know, a lot of the depictions of what we have of thug culture and then also, <clears throat> excuse me, of, you know, the Uncle Tom or the sellout was someone who was doing what they thought was best for them to advance in a culture like you just mentioned that isn't even theirs you know advancing in a eurocentric environment so you went this way or you went that way to do it now um in order to uh for me to think you know not to be a victim any longer it really takes accountability and i know that's you know a, a hot where you know it doesn't really mean a whole lot without action but <clears throat> On a certain level, you have to do that individually, but at the same time, when you're holding yourself accountable individually, you have to really look at how what your action does impacts the community around you. Because like you, you mentioned, it's a, about changing the community and not just yourself. So if, you know, if I'm looking at, you know, maybe I was uh, pumping something in the streets and people were getting sick, you know, when I'm having that a revelation moment, I'm seeing that. That's something that, you know, is going to hold weight on my scale of what I've done good, you know, to benefit myself versus negative in the community. Uh, same thing with, you know, with the uh, coon, Uncle Tom, because how many people did you sell out? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people say like, oh, he sold out. But what the real damage is, is that you sold out your own people, other people to get ahead of them. So you have to see how many toes or fingers did you step on to get there? How many times did you turn your back to, you know, a, a brother, a family member, a friend that needed you at that moment because you were only worried about pleasing, you know, say your white boss or, 
you know, trying to get ahead in, you know, any organization really. So I think it starts with, you know, holding yourself accountable, but in the manner of your impact in the community. Yo, and I, and I agree with that. Like, so I've gone on record to say this before, man, and I'll, I'll say it again and I'll, I'll leave it on the internet. Like, uh, I love my people. I've not always been treated well by some of my people, but that has never diminished the love I have for my people. And when we look at both these things and you talk about like trying to fit into a, a dominant culture, the Maya worldview on it is like, I, I want to help people to abstain from the things that harm them in spite of how much they've been told that it's going to benefit them. Right. And that applies to both sides of these things. Right. So I'm, I'm going to jump out the window right now. Like I have listened to Candace Owens for years, right. I've listened to her for years and I have struggled with some of the stuff she has said. And on other things, I was like, well, when she's right, she's right. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, I've said to Cincy and many other people, I think that the reason that the black conservative movement can't take a strong hold in the community is because the one place they're not, is in the community, right? They're on YouTube. They do town hall events in other cities, or but they're not out there evangelizing. They're not out there in the rec centers. They're not mixing it up, so the message falls flat because people are like, man, I don't know you. <laughs> like, I don't what how you can't even begin to tell me how this is going to benefit me to switch my mind to that. And then when I look at the brothers that like, you know, I'm talking about my, some people who might share the same last name as me. How that culture has, you know, negatively impacted my family and you guys are both right like the one thing i feel like we have the hardest time doing just as african americans forget like the entire descendants of from the continent of africa is getting on the same page about what is harmful and what is permissible right like what is the best thing for all parties involved and this is where it gets really really weird right so you guys know this uh i don't know if you do know him have you heard of a guy called charleston white before He's all right. He's another social commentator. Listen, I'm not coming after this man for anything, but he's, uh, you know, he's been coming out saying some things. I don't know how long he's been around, but he just popped up in my algorithm for a few different things. And uh, two things he popped up for. And I just want to get you guys weight on this. And I thought I thought he was being consistent in his critique. Right. Uh, the sister that's currently locked up in Russia right now uh, for bringing the uh, the oil into Russia. His comment was that. Listen, I'm not going to rally, riot, or do anything for a woman that wouldn't stand up for the national anthem. He's like, we got people in our own community locked up unjustly for, on weed charges. Why should I care more about her than the people? And I'm paraphrasing. This is the spirit of what he's saying. Why should I care more about her than the people that are here? And then I was just like, all right, so he's one of these guys. <laughs> like, He's going to pop up. He's going to say some stuff, and I'll probably see him on Fox News. But then... He came out of nowhere and he like started talking about Jay-Z and R. Kelly. Uh, Jay-Z and someone else should be in the same jail cell as R. Kelly, you know, allegedly, for their behaviors. And he pointed out something in regards to how our media, the, the stuff we consume as a people has popularized certain things. He's like, you guys don't even forget, we all went to go see a movie called Belly. And DMX all in, on the screen it is, you know, re received a certain type of pleasure from a 16-year-old actress, right? And I thought that was an interesting take because what he was alluding to was the popular culture, The, you know, on that side, have we made it permissible for apathy and degeneracy <laughs> to be acceptable? Like, are we, are we okaying this by... And I'm guilty of it too, like, the streaming it, giving our dollars to music or mediums that show us as lower than we actually are. What do you think? Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Look. Man. <laughs> Look. So, so, you know, I'm going to have to check this guy out, but <laughs> it, it's it's the old banana and a tailpipe. Okay. Right? So, you know, I, I was born in 1973. So hip-hop for me, um, when I was introduced to hip-hop, hip-hop was – it was diverse, right? You know, um, you had you had your NWAs, right? You, but you also had your public enemies. Right. You had your poor righteous teachers. You had your ex clan, and then you had your De La Souls, and then you had, you know what I'm saying? You had a variety of different and the far. You just had a variety of of MCs or hip hop or rap. You know what I'm saying? It was it was before it became mainstream, right? right. It was it, it was it was balanced, 
right? It, it, it showed all of us. And so, you know, when we think about these things, we're like, oh, you know, initially, even though white corporations oversaw it, it was still black. Right. Fast forward to now, man, they talking about all that stuff. He talking about belly. He talking about, okay, who pro- who, who produced it? Who the one who, who mass, who was the one to push it into um, the world? Who was the one that's, that's funding, um, you know, these different artists today, right? When right. we look at hip hop today, Hip hop today, it's, it's it's so man, it's so one sided. You know, you know, skinny jeans. You know what I'm saying? Drugs. You know, <laughs> sex, money, and murder. Right? That's right. all it is. Right? And then you get some Coles and some Kendricks in there every now and again, or, or then you get Drake. Right? You know. Anyways, I don't even want to talk about that. Guy. So, but who's pushing? Who's the one who's paying these guys these millions of dollars, or who's paying? Um, you know, the, the 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 whole team, millions of dollars to promote this particular music. It's, it's white me, it's white people, bro. Right. So he can say what he wants to say, but it goes back to my original statement. If we don't get to the root, if we don't deal with the root of why there's thugs and why there are whitewashed, you know, black men and women, if we don't get to the root of it, we'll always be fighting each other. We'll always make it seem like it's us and we'll never deal with the reality of it comes from somewhere, right? And so we got to get to the root of this stuff, man. So, you know, he can say what he want to say, bro. And, and you know, and, and yes, we have to be accountable. We do. But if you take a young dude from the streets, from the hood, who came from nothing, and you say, I give you a million in order to say this, to, to act this way, to do this, and to do that, you know, and you're a thug, but you're really what? You're really a coon, because coon is <laughs> this. <That's what> you- <laughs> right. Right. And so, you know, you know, we just we got to be honest about it. We can't just, you know, just let them people just throw stuff out and not deal with the root of each and every situation that Mm -hmm. we see ourselves in in 2022. So so that's my take on it, man. I don't know if I I addressed it, but that that, man, these these folks, man, they they something (laughs) else, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't want them. I don't want to start saying cuz and stuff like that. They something else. Yeah, you don't want to disrespect like that, man. The banner's red on this channel. You, you... All right, love. <laughs> uh, it's, it's all, it's all, you know what I'm saying? Blue, blue, and red make, blue and red make purple. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no, I agree, with, I agree with that. Cincy, what, what, what are your thoughts, my brother? Because I want to tap in on this because I know since he's probably like, if Steve doesn't start getting intellectually honest because, I, you know, I got to come back at it a little bit. Go ahead, go ahead. You're muted, my brother. So, you know, uh, I've spoke on this a little bit before. I'm not going to I'm not one of the people that immediately jump out and say, you know, everything that is said in, you know, a rap song is said to promote that Um, a lot of times, especially, you know, like you were mentioned, if you go back in time, a lot of it was stories. And I don't have a problem, particularly with people telling their stories on tape. I feel like if anything, that's is almost um therapeutic for someone to do that. I think the big issue, like you mentioned before, though, was balance. So when you had so many different um, types of rap artists, you know, so many different types of people showing you what it is to be different black or this type of black, and it all created a great balance. So I, you know, even for me in the early 90s, I could be a nerd and listen to Jay-Z and nothing he said then made me want to go out in the streets and do that, you know, Mm -hmm. or, you know, I could be in the streets and have appreciation for what De La Soul was saying, because it still makes sense to me. The issue that happened, like you said, was when there became a loss of balance, that's all you ever hear. So it's hard to say, you know, I don't want to be in the streets, but I understand your story. If all I'm hearing is drugs, guns, sex, street bullshit basically i have nothing else to balance me out and you know like you mentioned j cole or kendrick that's two people in like 30 years of music that we've had you know what i'm saying so it's like there's no balance for anybody to say okay i like this and that so i you know i can fall somewhere in between i don't have to be this or that and now it's just all that and so they're like you said someone's controlling that trying to influence us which way to be 
So this, this is where I agree with you, brothers, both times. And I've said this. There are bad actors in the community, right? There have been bad actors in the community since the uh, flooding of Harlem and Compton and other key areas with crack cocaine. There's still, the coordinated attack on uh, the black family. There have been bad actors that have helped to get these things in. I agree with the assessment in regards to media 100%, right? My issue is, and I think you both touched on it, my issue with it is, though, right? And I'm not going to you know, claim sainthood because some of the music I listen to, I'm like, man, this is, this is a cold verse. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm sorry. It's, it's not representing well, but I always ask myself this question. True. It's being peddled and being funded by people. Right. And it's being marketed by a larger entity, but at what point, and I may be asking too much of someone that doesn't have the, a, a worldview like this. At what point do you say no, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you you work in the substance abuse field like I do, Al, uh, Alvin, at a certain point, it's like, yes, I understand that you were put in a very, a very hard situation. Your family upbringing helped make it more accessible for you to probably become strong on drugs. You have a genetic pr uh, proclivity to it because your mother was hooked on drugs. But when we start helping people, we always start with how can I help you to understand that you are doing things that are destroying you, right? And you start correcting their behaviors before unleashing them on the world. And so, and, that, and that's my, that's my first point. The second point is, so I think that, I think that now 2022, because I agree with you guys, we have identified the root. This is where I disagree with some of my black socialist friends when they say black capitalism, isn't the, the, you know, it isn't the answer to our problems, you know, but it's a part of it, right? It's a part of the piece. If we're more in control of what's going on media wise and taking control of our own image and we have the dollars to do that, the only other thing we need now is to make sure that the black men or women who are leading this charge are also ethical. Right. And I think that goes back to your what you both said about deprogramming of western culture if that's what you want to go i would call it ethical thinking right it's like if i'm coming up and i'm truly reaching back for my people why am i going to do my people the same way i was done while i was coming up through the industry or even if you're not in something that that high right and this is the reason why i wanted to have a recorded conversation because all three of us are saying the same thing i just think that sometimes it breaks down to the and don't string me up for this listening audience since 1968, watching leaders systematically either be assassinated by external forces or internal forces, which were funded by external forces, watching how community, the community uh, spirit was changed from communal to split. Now, you guys are both old enough to remember there used to be a time when we were growing up everyone and people still probably do this did everything together right i thought i was related to everyone in harlem at one point in my life that's how well i knew everyone that lived within the six mile block radius and i always felt moderately safe because i'm like i know that person i know this person that person knows my mother and, and like there was the code and the ethic that still existed then it seems like we're leaning more towards apathy and though we're looking for the root cause, I do not think we can beat our opponent. I used the word that I wanted to use for all you commentators. I don't think we can beat our opponents if we don't strengthen within. Or you, you think I'm way off on this one. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm going to jump in there so so my, my, my guy can, you know, formulate his thoughts. But look, check this out. <laughs> I'm going to deal with A, B, and C. So, A. Okay. When do we take accountability for what we allow into our spirit? When right. we allow ourselves to uh, promote, to purchase, right? When do we, I'm just, I'm in a place, Steve, where I'm looking at the root of everything. Mm. Like, you got here because of something else. Right. You, you like what you like because of something that was a seed that was planted you don't just all of a sudden just like that so when we look at that the, the, the idea of when do i take accountability man these dudes are so savage with it mm. they, they they promote they promote this stuff not to the adults they promote this stuff to the kids right right because if i can control the mind of the kids right i can have them for the next 40 50 60 years 
either incar incarcerated, indoctrinated, you know, inundated with all sorts of things. I, I have these kids, right? And so they figured out something with the kids, but we think it's just right now with Generation Z or the millennials. No, they've been they've been doing it. Once they figured out what hip hop and uh, could do, you saw a shift from hip hop to R and R and B, right? R and B used to be the thing. Right. I mean, we loved each other. You know, like we was like, we oh man, you know, I'm hurt or whatever. Yeah. It was, it was, <laughs> now it's like, I, you know, what I'm saying I want to shoot up everybody. You know what I'm saying? I need me a, a thug B. You know what I'm saying? I need some mollies and all that kind of stuff. And so they figured out something a long time ago, and we're four or five steps behind. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so for me to take ownership of that, I got to get back to the root. And I have to say, you know what? They've been trying to kill me and kill my community. So now I have to take ownership of what I allow into my spirit because I know that this is detrimental to my future. You got three sons, right? Yeah. It's detrimental to their future. When you start to listen to that music as this is them, this, it's going to get worse, then I, I, I guarantee you, when you think about them and listen to that music, it'll change how you even approach it. Right. You probably don't listen to it anymore because you, it's, it's like, man, if it's going to get worse than this for my boys, I need to do something different and try to promote something different. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the whole capitalistic, um, you know, mindset of, you know, uh, or people saying that capitalism, that we don't really need capital in order to undo something. Man, we need we need bread, bro. <laughs> we, yeah. we, need, we do. We do. Yeah. You know, and, and we need to figure out how to get it. We need to figure out how to, um, you know, <laughs> It, look, we're consumers. Yeah. We are consumers. We want Louis, Gucci, Nike, this, that. We we are consumers, bro. And then when we put our own stuff out, you know, it's like we hesitate on it because we're so used to, again, the root. I want to be so much like them that I can't even see myself putting on something else that's not like them because they made Louis, Gucci, that Louis, Gucci, and all that people, Nike, they don't love us. No, they know that we are the biggest consumers, so they promote to us, right? And so that's that's what we need bread. We need we need equity, right? Mm -hmm. I don't need equality. If I have equality without equity, it's a done deal. That's why they shot Dr. King. That's right. why they killed Dr. King. It wasn't because of equality. They were cool with that. They yeah. said, okay, you know, you know, equity was the issue. And so now that leads me into my last point. Equality. <sighs> you said don't the people don't string you up, they about to string me up. <laughs> the the issue, the, the reason why we are where we are today as a community is because of <laughs> desegregation. Uh oh. <laughs> Speaking right? on it. Yeah. Separate but equity, equitable. It's mm -hmm. what we're separate but equal is cool too, but separate but equitable. When we were separate, mm -hmm. bro, our communities were thriving. Right. Them dudes had to come in and bomb Tulsa. Right. They had to come in and and rape, kill, murder, destroy what they do. That's what they they had to do that in order to, right? And that still didn't kill our community. Right. The issue with us today is that we don't have community because we want to, I mean, I want, uh, look, desegregation, man, let's go live with the white folks. Let's go let the white folks, and I don't care who's, man, look, I am a preacher, a gospel preacher. I'm, look, I love the Lord with all my heart. Jesus was not white. So let me go ahead and say this. <laughs> Once we decided to desegregate, we said we want to be more like our oppressor. We want we want our oppressor's education. We want to learn how to live like our oppressor. Mm. We want to learn like how to live like the people who enslaved us, the people who beat us, mistreat us. We want to go to PWIs, you know, predominantly white institutions. We want to get. We want to learn how to be successful like them. We want we want so much that we want so much to be white with them, uh, like them, and and all that kind of stuff that we didn't realize that we were going to lose us and we lost us. We are communal people. But once you start to be like them folks, you're going to be me, myself, and I. That's the Eurocentric mindset. 
It's all about me. How can my family, I don't care about your family. I don't care about the community. I don't care about, I care about me, myself and I, how I can accumulate what I can do and what I can pass down generations to my family. That's not the black way. That's not the African way. That's not the quote unquote Middle Eastern way. That's the white way. And so we wanted to be like them so much. And now we are. And then we're like, well, what's wrong with us? Because we like them. You wanted to go to school with them. You wanted your oppressor to teach you how to be successful. You wanted your oppressor to teach you how to love your woman. You wanted your oppressor to teach you how to accumulate wealth. That's what you wanted. So now you got it, and this is what we have. And your oppressor has enslaved you again by... Man, look. <laughs> hold, hold on, bro. Since before you jump out, man, because this, someone's gonna watch this name. Like, why ain't Steve saying nothing? I'm gonna say this, right? So I agree with 86 percent of that, right? The 14 percent that's being left out is I would broaden. Now, this is just <laughs> speaking for blacks born in America, since you already know where I'm going, because I have no beef. Well, I won't say that. I take umbrage with not including other people into that right so growing up when i did in the 80s i had an african medallion you know what I'm saying i had a pick and it wasn't just these weren't just accessories right they meant something you know what I'm saying? i was taught that these things meant something and two i learned otherwise right which is why i never really took a hold of pan-african thought i respected marcus garvey i respected the garveyites i respected all those old uh, stone temple builders i i had respect for a lot of brothers in the nation of islam and i still have respect for many brothers in the nation of islam for what they were trying to bring i have respect for the fundamental uh foundational black church of america right because they it was before the black church there was no other group invested in the community where it was safe to speak right and that the black church is a byproduct of black people not being allowed to worship with white people my issue is that sometimes we talk about the what is the quote unquote uh, oppressive culture when we're not even looking. If we're going to go that route, we got to go all the way there. Now, I'm not going ADOS or FBA on y'all, but I'm saying that for African Americans or black people raised in, because I'll take Caribbeans or any black person raised in this and had this experience, in my opinion, you're in, right? You're in, but specifically for the descendants of slaves from North America. It's dangerous sometimes when we start looking at it as just one group was oppressive, when we don't look at all of the things, if we're really going to get to the root that led us here, right? I was joking around with Sensi, and I'll say this, and I don't care who comes for me. If they're going to pay me reparations, I'm turning right to the continent like, I need to know what tribe you were in that neighbored this tribe, because you helped get us here. Right, you you understand what I'm saying? Like, if these descendants look, look, look. pay, let me let me push. Oh, back on this I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not just going after the Africans yeah, yeah. either. Then I'm turning my eyes to the Great Arab Nation as well. I'm like, y'all got to kick in, right? Still to this day, one of the biggest transporters of black yeah. bodies. So I just apply the rules across the board. Go ahead, Cincy. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Cincy, because I'm, 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 I'm going to come back. He stopped himself. Because he knows he was about to get triggered. Uh, he was triggering something inside him. Like something. <laughs> um, you know what? I, like, I can understand where you come from that, but and I also won't say uh, black capitalism is the end-all, be-all, but here's why it's important, though. Um, because right now we have we like you said we are a large consumer group if not the largest consumer group in a european basically economy which means no matter how many dollars we actually have it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day none of it is coming back to us in the same manner that it goes out to them so having our communities is important and having money in our community is important because if we keep the money in our community, then we have control of how it's seen. Imagine, you know, like you said, if the, in, you know, the black leaders in place were for the yeah. better and betterment of the community, then we can control the media that we're seeing. We can have influence on the rappers. Um, uh, just to touch back on that real quick, because one of the things that we lost sight of, and I think why it's so hard for us to like eliminate 
the idea of thug culture and especially like you were mentioning with them targeting kids is they use positive association mm -hmm. with negative traits so you know back in the day when rappers were first rapping they weren't saying a whole lot different but what happened over time is the more stories you hear about the streets or drugs or selling drugs or doing drugs the same person that's telling you that story now has got a stack of money in their face or diamonds around their neck and so they made it look cool it's like you said it's a positive association for kids like i want that so this is how i go about that route instead of actually hearing the shitty story which like you had mentioned alvin that when you start to actually hear the story and how fucked up it can be then you take it for what it is as a story or a lesson a way to avoid that situation so you can control that narrative a little bit better if your dollars are the ones that supporting that because you control your media in the community um i won't completely say that I disagree or agree with the desegregation, but I will say that I've gotten into this conversation with Steve many times that I absolutely hate that the only history that we learn about ourselves here, and whether it's negative or bad what happened before we got here, like you were going at Steve, the fact that all we learn is that we were slaves in our education system is beyond fucked up because when you go to the slavery era, when you know we abandon traditions um that we brought over here originally from africa and different parts of africa to learn how to read english or to completely go into christianity and i don't think that either one of those things were necessarily a bad thing until it becomes all of who you are is what they've provided for you or what you need to learn to fit into them so if if our history is only 400 years old and doesn't include everything that came before that then all we do know is that what we thought the right way was to be one of them instead of to be our own people and 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 here's the thing go ahead i'm alvin you go ahead because i know you're about to come at uh, <laughs> some, some I, nice I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna come to that 14 percent I'm coming for that 14 percent <laughs> and I love the the fact that we don't um see you know 100 percent eye to eye that's that's you know we we, we need not be that right yeah. uh, we we should never be that we should never we, we are not a monolith um no. and we should never be that and so you know um when I think about I'm, I, I love us so much here in America, not not to discount, you know, what happened in in, in Ayaptis or Kemet or Egypt, not to discount what happened in Nubia, not to discount what happened in Ethiopia, right? All those are very, especially for me as a Christian, those are very important places mm -hmm. for me as a Christian, right? Um, especially when it became, as it pertains to Blacks and Christianity. And, you know, that's a whole nother discussion how, you know, Christianity was in Africa before it was in Europe, yes. right? And so, so you know, but I, I, I love, I love the fact that you know, um, our continent is the biggest. Is the I mean that you know the Africa, right? You know, right. Akibula, right? We, you know, we call it Africa because of Africanists, but Akibula. I, but for me. Um, I know my history extends beyond uh, the 400 years here in America. The difficulty for us is that, is it, you know, which, which part of the West, Western part of Africa am I, am I, am I from? Am, am, am I Ghanaian and am I Nambian? Am I, am I Liberian? Which, which one am I? Right. So, so cause within all of those different um, countries within the continent, you have different tribes and different thoughts and different ancestral things and different religious practices. And it's, it's, it's so convoluted that we can never fully embrace who we were there, right? Because even bringing brought over here, there were differences in who we were when we were brought over here. The similarity, the one thing 
that we had was the fact that we were this complexion. And this complexion alone allowed us to say no matter which tribe we came from, which country we came from, or, or which whatever we came from, no matter what, we had this dissimilarity. They hated us because of this. And so we united because of this, even if we didn't speak, speak the same dialect, even if we didn't speak the same language, even if we didn't you know, have the same history, those things, right? were superseded by the fact that we were oppressed. We had the same oppressor. And because of that, we unified, right? Because of that, we came together. Not all of us had the same dialect. Not all of us spoke the same language. But when we began to, it's the beautiful thing about us, bro. I, and that's why I, I just love us. He, I love us here so much because we overcame the fact that they took away our language our, our worship practices, our, our mores, they took away everything. And we and, and they tried, they raped us, they beat us, they 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 took away our kids, they sold us, right, they did whatever right. they want to do with us. And yet and still, us three brothers are still right here today. There is no other people on this planet who will be able to say that same thing. No other people. They tried to enslave the natives, they tried to enslave themselves, but when they enslaved us, and I'm not just talking about, you know. Um, a particular part of Africans, period, Akibulans, period, there's something about us that's that's special, right? And I may not know the whole history of every country or every tribe in Africa, but I know there's something about this melanin that God has given me that makes me special, so that unifies me. And they, they, they know more about it than us. That's why they hate us. Mm. They hate us and they oppress us. There's no other people on this planet they oppress that they hate as much as blacks around the world globally, but no other, no, no other, no other blacks across this globe has dealt with what we've dealt with here on the continent of North America and in the Caribbean. So, so that, I, that's why I love us here because we've overcome so, so much and we can start to look, we can look at all of our accomplishments in, in Egypt, Ethiopia, and all throughout the, the, the sub-Saharan and we could and then Steven, so I'm gonna flip. Go for it. You like, okay, man, you know, we need to get we need to get our money back from all these folks. <laughs> you know I'm I'm, if, I'm if that's the route we're going. I want it all. Yeah, yeah. No, all. If we're gonna go that route, let, let's give me give me hey, run me mine from everybody. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, you know, I'm hey, I'm 100 percent with that. I, I I agree with that 100. Like everybody needs to run me mine. The difficulty in it is that you know when we start to look at the Muslims, right? right we look at Islam and, and 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 their invasion. They invaded Africa. We talk about the we talk about the transatlantic slave trade way too much. They invaded Africa, right? Mm. They invaded right. Africa, and then man, look, y'all know you got some nation of Islam and some Muslim friends on here. <laughs> they, they kill me with this. They kill me with the fact that they won't say you got the slave master's name. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Yahtzee. <laughs> you got the slave master's name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Speak on it. Speak uh, on Muhammad it. Muhammad is a slave master's name, too. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Like, so, 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 yeah, so, so, yeah, man, yeah, run me mine all across the board, right? You right. don't have to be honest about what that looks like. Well, right. Not only what it looks like financially, what it looks like culturally. Mm. We we have lost so much identity as a, a continent. We well now we're talking about the continent of our Kibula. We we lost so much identity as a continent from the from Islam and the European Christian. We we lost so much. So, so I'm 100% what you want to say, man, yo, run me mine. But I want to throw this little, um, this thing out and I'm going to, I'm going to drop the mic and, and pass it over. Um, so when, um, you know, I'm, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian. So I believe in the Bible 100%. When God decided to make man according to his image and his likeness. Right. Historically, we know that there are other people here. So people were like, oh, there's other people here, right? No, when God made man in his image, after his likeness, 
not the likeness of the cavemen and the prehistoric. No, right. when God decided to step into the situation, God decided to make man and create man in Africa. The Bible says it. Right. The white people's Bible says it. The black people's Bible says it. Islam says it. Every, 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 they say civilization started in Africa. So when God decided to make man, he decided to make man in his image after his likeness and decided to create man out of dirt, mud, that's going to look like me and you. We have to, we be so focused on these cultural things that we miss out on the fact that y'all not going to like this. God made me, he made me to look like him. No other man on this planet looks like God but me. And I'm saying that for us. God made us in his image. We need to get back to the fact that we're supposed to be like God. We And we'll stop trying to be like the white man and stop trying to be like, you know, even the African or the Israelite. We got to start being like God. And I ain't talking about the five percenters God. I'm talking about we yeah. got to start being who God is. God created me and you in his image and after his likeness. That means we have power. We have creativity that we are supposed to be the head and not the tail. That when God created man, he said, you're supposed to have dominion over the fish over the sea, the fowl of the air. We got to get back to having dominion. And that man was not the white man. It was not the brown man. It was not the yellow man. They could be mad at me as all as they want to. It was the black man. So I'm going to drop the mic and I'm going to go ahead. And drop that. They're going to they're gonna come from my head after that one, Steve. They're coming for me. No, no, no. This is, but this is why I brought you on, man. Uh, I was, Alvin and I have had. And, and folks, I want you to know this. Alvin met me at my most militant <laughs> like, like at the crescendo of the when i was my most militant in my life here's what i here's what i think now right and here's what i believe now i am also a believer who has you know struggled to stay connected not to the faith but to the organization and the institution of church sometime but i make no excuse for it because i know that we are all sinner is in need of forgiveness i do not think the way that i used to about these things i think that when it comes to and i want to make sure we give the uh, the uncle tom's their love too because everyone's probably thinking we're just gonna attack the brothers who are out the out in the streets and stuff but uh you you both hit on something which is a higher type of ethics right for us as christians there is no higher ethic than thus say the lord right if god said it he meant it the way he said it that's the way he wanted it done there's no need for revision which brings us to a lot of accusations that people outside of the christian community have about christianity what's all the extra stuff about i think that though looking at it if i'm looking at it through the lens that was provided to me um coming through christianity i'm not looking down on my brothers that sell drugs i'm looking at it as like yes i understand that you were put in this position but you need to understand that this is an evil and we have to denormalize evil right and that has been one of the most freeing thoughts in my mind which is people always feel like you judging me i'm like no i'm trying to tell you there is a pattern to the decision you're about to make yes you about to be up. You about to get a chain. You about to get kicks. All of that stuff, whether it be from pumping on the block or getting your starter rapper kit, as Dame Dash says, you about to be up. But at what at what point did your up become more important to the young lady you just sold drugs to, who is pregnant with a small child? And as I look at the root cause, and we deal with the. I'm not saying don't deal with it, but sometimes it seems victory is closer within the community. Going, hey. We got to stop here, right? And now the other thing, like what you uh, what you were talking about, Cincy, about uh, the culture, right? I, I will always acknowledge that, right? Like anyone that is a survivor or a descendant of the transatlantic slave trade, if you know anything about how that went down, and I'll even use, uh, I'll use Haiti as my closer on this, right? Because, and I'll use Ethiopia, right? There are two, probably wonder where I'm going with this, but they took the culture, Right. But we were provided with a culture, whether you be a believer or not, of surviving. Right? <laughs> like we survived one of the most horrific events that could ever happen to any people group. Right. So there's the transatlantic slave trade. There's the mass genocides in Africa. There's manifest destiny for the Native Americans, because that's still something that like I, I trip out on sometimes. I have this feeling when I walk around, I'm like, man, it was a whole people group here before there was a Harlem. But I digress. We survived that. And I think that in the early days of moving out and claiming what we were hoping would be happiness associated with freedom, we lost that 
because they kept tugging at it. And then eventually some of us gave it up so freely. And in, in regards to reparations, I want to be on the record of saying this. I think the best jokes that anyone has ever pulled has been reparations in the conversation on why it will never happen because they knew that at some point the argument could not legally be with, it can't stand up, right? It was like, okay, so this was promised by the government. It was never given by the government. So the argument isn't with the descendants of those people. It's with the government finally paying what's owed. But you have, and we'll get into the, you know, the black conservative committee now who's been propped up and pushed out. They have made it a social conversation. So they've basically said, hey, you know, if we pay them, we got to take it out of you. And who do they say that to? They say that to our neighboring cultures right next to us. They say that to the Asians. They say that to the Mexicans. They say that to the Puerto Ricans, the Dominicans. They say that to the Jewish people. They're like, if we pay this group, you have to pay more to pay this group. Forget history, right? <laughs> like, because my immediate rebuttal would be well, like, well, wait a minute. We're pumping billions of dollars into this country right now, but that's only because it's a strategical point. We provided aid to this country for years, you know, and this is exactly why Malcolm X wanted to go in front of the UN, but that's why I know there will never be reparations because now they've made it a social situation. I just think that in regards to our internal conversation as black people, I'm not talking about killing thugs, right? I'm talking about saying we have to address these brothers and we have to address them in a loving way. And then sometimes maybe it's like Malcolm said, maybe sometimes you got to put your shiny boots on and be like, you are not amongst us any longer because we're really quick to ostracize the Candace Owens, but the knowing, knowingly evil people that prey on the community, we will give them a pass. We will give them a pass like 100%. Now let's switch to these Oreo eating, no sugar on the Cheerio having <laughs> Fox 5 analyst. <laughs> let's talk about the other uh, quote unquote whitewash people. You know why they are not more dangerous, but they have been a thorn recently? I don't want to be counted amongst the group. I'm going to share something with you, Alvin. Uh, Cincy and I have had our public discourse and we were going to do a, a, a public debate, which was really is a joke. And then it started to get serious. And then I, I said, let's put the kibosh on this. Cause I don't want it to be two black men again on the internet, arguing a point. And then it's just like, it's clip and that goes viral. But I look at people like Candace Owens. I look at people like other black commentators uh, in regards to peddling conservative ideology. And the reason why I reject a great deal of what they said what they say, it's a, you know, it's a broken wing on the same bird, right? You're not addressing anything morally within the community. You're saying that I have to assimilate into another community. You're, present, you're presenting conservative thought as if, in many instances, for the people who claim to be Christians on that side, you're putting that on the same level as scripture, right? So what's the problem with those folks over there? What do you think the problem is, guys? Um, <laughs> well, you know what? I don't know, you know, because cause a lot of times I'm like, all right, is there a problem that they found a way to get ahead that mm -hmm. involves them disassociating themselves with their own people? That's a problem. I think that's one of the problems. Um, uh, you know, is the problem that they really don't feel like we even are a culture, that we're all the same people. And I think we know... Uh, you know, I'm not going to throw names out there, but we know one particular person, at least, who doesn't even believe that race is real. And I think that that's mm -hmm. another problem with that group of people. So anything that, you know, we would say that's, you know, systematic or anything like that, they automatically disregard because it's not 1960 anymore. Completely tossing out the fact that that wasn't that freaking long ago. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, you know, just off the bat, I feel like it's misidentity on their part they don't they either don't want to be a part of something or they don't want to believe that they are a part of something you know like right no i i get i get what you're saying uh i don't want to jump too far into it but i do want to say that i do agree a uh, hundred percent that it's not um as destructive at this point as the, the culture of mention um just it, honestly because we actually police it oh um, we actually <laughs> fucking police it <laughs> uh, as a community 
So uh, <laughs> it's like it's hard to say because yeah, you're still gonna get those jumping out of the window, but you know, there's a reason that word has not died and why even in our community has such a negative connotation. We kept right. it around for a reason, and right. it's to deter people from doing that. Where <laughs> you know, if we could get that same negative connotation into thug culture, it probably would work out, work itself out over time. <laughs> That's fire, bro. Man, man, get this man his Bible, Alvin. Uh, he's yeah, speaking. That's, that's fire, bro. <laughs> nah, that's, hey, bro. Nah, that's, that's fire. That's real talk. Um, man. Holy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I agree that it's not as um, destructive as uh, thug culture, or else, or else they will promote it more. Mm. Uh, they would, uh, they would <laughs> push it more, right? They would. It, it would be on um, more television channels and more rap out, more more rap songs, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so we, you know, we get Kanye, um, who's who's trying to figure out, right? So we look at Kanye and like he's like Candace Owens and he agrees. No, Kanye is trying to figure out. He's like on the opposite side of Coon, Uncle Tom, whitewashed is the Democratic Party, man. Like, man, look. These, okay. these these bougie Negroes on the other side are just as bad, but because, again, we've been indoctrinated with that's okay, then we just let them get a pass. So I'm going to take this conversation to, to, the, to, the, rock, to the left. Okay. <laughs> All right. Pun intended. I think Um, the black bourgeoisie who primarily are Democrats are more problematic than the, what we call the uncle Tom's. Okay. What we call the, the ones who are right wing. Okay. Because when you study the, golly, I don't want to get all nerdy on y'all, but no, tell them about how Dr. King made the deal. Seem like you know, it's not going to seem right. Like I have this type of information, but <laughs> the, with the with the black bourgeoisie, the black bougie class, um, they they are the gatekeepers, right? They are the gatekeepers, and they're gatekeepers not for the black community, but they speak on behalf of the black community. But if we're really honest with ourselves, the black community is not a community that ever really exists. Mm. What what is the black community? You you know what? That is the the, the age old question. <laughs> like, what, what what is the black community? But but then we we have these bougie negroes who will speak up for the black community and what black community are you speaking up for? Mm-hmm. They're speaking up for their black community which Look, they're capitalists too. Yep. Right? But you know, they 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 disguise it in nonprofits. Mm. They disguise it in certain language and lingo. They but they're the gatekeepers. They're your your alpha phi alphas and, and masons and alpha kappa apples and all them, all those like educated Du Bois. W.E.B. Du Bois. <laughs> yeah. See, the black community is W.E.B. and right? Yeah. Booker T. It's not just so the black community is so but when we talk about the black community when we let other people speak about the black community, it always seems like they're speaking about the black community where we're in the quote unquote ghettos, the hood music, the thug Who's 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 but the gatekeepers, right? The gatekeepers are allowing this. Why? Because they've disassociated themselves really with the the real black community. They mm-hmm. they are the hierarchy, the educated, the talented tenth. Yeah. Right. We don't talk about that enough. The talented tenth. Your Farrakhan is talented tenth. Yeah. Right. Masons, Greeks, all them. People who have the, the educated amongst us, the talent in the tenth. But when we talk about the black community, we don't talk about that. All right. And when we talk about the, the whitewashed, 
black Negro, we don't talk about them because they are the gatekeepers. They have Greek letters in African American organizations. <laughs> yeah. And y'all better, yeah. hey, look, hey, I'm, I'm gonna be good. I'm, I'm, I'm be, y'all gotta have me back on here because, uh, look, yeah, look. <laughs> That's a good so, word, so, though, man. So, so that, that, that's what I'm bringing to the table is that yeah. we talk about the Uncle Tom. They're a minority. A, a, they're minute in this discussion. But w- what about, you know, and I'm neither Democrat nor Republican, but, you know, I call a spade a spade. You know what I'm saying? And I love to play spades. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut you when I have to cut you. <laughs> The Democratic, the, these Democratic bourgeois, the black bourgeoisie. There's a there's a book. There are books. There's a lot of history on the black bourgeoisie that we don't talk yeah. about. That led us to this point in time where we are today. We need going back to the very first statement or the very first. We need balance. Right. We are not. We can't be either or. We need some balance. Where's the middleman? Right? Where's the middleman? Do I have to be a thug or do I have to be? No, I, where, where's the balance? I I, th- I think we need both and. We need some people who are going to cut some ears off and we need some people who are going to be able to say, you know what, let's work on this legislation together. So, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm done. That, no, that, that was a good word because what both of you said, thank you for saying that because I want that on the record. Since he came out and because this is what happens usually when you have these conversations. What you and Cincy just said, a lot of times you'll get people who lean, who skew right, right? And they will listen up until the point of like, yeah, get those thugs. Talk about how we need to be accountable. And then if you say anything in regard to that side of the table, their ears usually shut off and they say you can't be intellectually honest. But you both made real statements since he said it's true that we police the whitewashed blacks more than we do any other group in the human white like don't you get up there and say no 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 mess like that and then the black you know the black elite right and i've always said this and i i'm, I'm stealing it obviously from uh brother malcolm who gave you the right to speak on behalf of anyone right people are always getting down on communism right and then they'll say you can't tell this person how to spend their dollars but the fact of the matter is no one actually elected beyonce and Jay-Z to be our advocates, right? Unless you're considering the dollars that we spend on them, some type of forfeit, giving them the permission to speak on behalf of us. But they are gatekeepers, and they are very much locked into that system. And that's why I think, and we talked about this on Dope Dynamics, we need to know who's amongst us and who's speaking for us, right? There should be a vetting process before you get up and say, on behalf of any people, Right. There should be a, the community should have a vetting process. Like, hold on for a second. Who knows him? Every other community has something like this. Right. You you cannot be an Orthodox Jewish person and speak out of line with what's being taught by the rabbi. You can't do it. You cannot do it. I'm telling you, you there are consequences for these type of behaviors in these communities. But we have people who often say things under the guise. I'm speaking for black people like, no, you're speaking out of your worldview. In regards to the black elites, though, and uh, I'm not scared to go conspiracy. We all know that. I believe we all know that that became more prominent when Kennedy and King and uh, Adam Clayton Powell, these characters, made the shift for the community. The Democratic Party wanted something from us. We needed something from them. A transaction was made and the community that has historically voted transactionally, I won't even say conservative, but they voted transactionally, all started to lean left because now there were people speaking about those issues. Now, I'm not saying that I don't know how much like the younger Kennedy that got assassinated. I believe he was more sincere in his his wanting to help the community. There is evidence to show that like, this wasn't just a guy that turned it on for the cameras. Like I think he really wanted, and I'm not saying his brother didn't, but that's what that whole transactional thing happened. But the reason I want to be fair in this conversation in regards to the quote unquote whitewashed blacks, I think that they're harmful on in this regard, which a lot of people want to dismay. And if it comes to my Christian friends, stop sending me clips of that black person you found that agreed with that one point that you made, right? Because then you're going to force me to go through that person's entire catalog and point out to you how they are intellectually not consistent and they're not actually doing anything 
besides recording these videos. Now, I will give it to the uh, Andrew Tatum and Candace in this. They did throw those rallies. They did do those, uh, not rallies, they had those meetings, the Blexit meetings, and they, right? I, I, I will give them to that, but there's a reason why a lot of black people reject them. And yes, you could say it's because of immorality, but it's also because like, well, okay, when you coming down, I love to hear what you got to say. I'll meet you on 125th street. <laughs> when you coming through, <laughs> Look, check, check, check this out, bro. So even though we vote Democrat, we are, we are way more conservative in our thinking as a people right then um but but historically we vote democrat and they give social programs so we just feel like that's what we should do so what they've done over the past you know um you know larry elder's been around forever but lately you know with the new uh so-called intellectual republican black class is they've tr they've tried to highlight the fact that we're more conservative. We're, we're, I'm seriously, if like yeah, no, no. we're way more conservative, <laughs> right? <laughs> that we are uh, liberal, um, but they tried to highlight that and show us that you know that we are more, you know, we are more uh, conservative in our thinking, in in our religious practices too. We are right, right? but the the reality is, you know, and then they try to do this whole, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the uh, Uncle Tom documentary there's, Not there's a documentary by by larry elder yeah. entitled uncle tom you know i think you you should know your enemy you should know your friends you should know everybody so that documentary was a very great documentary because they dispel the whole myth of uncle tom being used as a negative epithet as it pertains right. to a you know black community and then it also shows you know why black conservative uh ism is you know not as problematic as we think right because um, we're not a monolith. But if you start to study history, we know that there was a shift between what the original Republicans were and the original Democrats were. And so they 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 tinker on our uh, our intellect in trying to say that the original Democrats were, you know, uh, you know, the what do you call it, Ku Klux Klan and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. the, there was a shift in the, the real, so that's really more Republican than it is Democrat, but they'll use that history because we're intellectually, we just don't want to think that hard. Right. Well, anyways, as it pertains to, you know, these, these, you know, these Candace, Candace, I don't want to call her Candace Parker. She's not Candace Parker. Candace Parker didn't marry a white woman. Uh, <laughs> Candace, Candace Owens, <laughs> Candace Owens and, and these, and these people, um, opportunists, bro. They're opportunists. When she was in college, she was a Democrat. Right. Right? Like, when you're the only black person in the room, people love you, bro. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> For whatever reason. I don't even know what it is, man. They gravitate towards you. They're like, oh, my God, you're amazing. You know, ah, ah, ah. All that stuff. For whatever reason, they when you're the only black person, when you're one of the few black people in the room, they'll try to push you up to the top. Right. And that's really what I've seen over the past, you know, uh, you know, 10 years um, when it comes to conservative black folks is that they're trying to push black people, um, the, the, those one or two that are in their party towards the top, not only to try to get the black vote, but because there's something about us that they just I don't know what it is. But they just love us. I mean, they, they love us, um, but they hate us at the same time. And so I think that, you know, when, when it comes to black conservatism and um, those who act like um, act like they don't love our our culture, whatever that culture is, right, whatever black culture is or, you know, they're against, you know, things that we we we, we love. They don't they don't eat hog mogs and chitlins. I don't eat that either. No. Right? But they, you know, they, they push against that stuff. Yeah. Um, I just think it, it's all a plan that they're not even truly those people. That is just a gimmick. Politics is all gimmicky. It's a gimmick. They're right. not. They're not real people to me. For, I'm just one. Roland Martin on the other side. He's not a real person to me. He's not real. They don't represent um, the grassroots people um, who walk these streets and who are struggling 
to to live life day to day and worried about getting shot or worried about eating and worried about just trying to live life or worry about trying to take care of their wife and their kids. They, they're not those, they're not those people. Right. And so, um, you know, I, I just can't, I can't divorce them from each other. I think they're married, they're in bed together. Um, you know, and, and, you know, I don't like either one of them, the black conservative or the black bourgeoisie Democrat. Well, go ahead. Since what you got, man? <laughs> no, I, w- I was just uh, going to hop in and agree with that. They are such a, uh, a, a, distance a gap uh between the top and the bottom that it's like it you know like you guys mentioned how can you if you're at the top or if you're uh placing yourself in the conservative category or you know um in the uh bougie category like how can you relate to anybody if you're not there you know what i'm saying like mm. It's it's hard because you you like to think that at some point, even if you made it, like you mentioned earlier, got yourself up by bootstraps and went from you know rags to riches, that you would still be able to speak for those people. But we know ninety nine point nine percent of the time, that's not the same person. Like you do not stay the same person. So when you get there, you're no longer at that point showing people how to get up to there you're just trying to stay there (laughs) and that's and that's where the disconnect comes in like you no longer can relate to what it's like to be poor you might have a story to tell from back in your poor days but you don't i can't help you because helping you get there might risk my position up here man since he we have to get you on the Wednesday Bible study here pretty soon. <laughs> I would go, I would go a little bit further and say that, and uh, I heard this is someone else's thought, but I agree with it immensely. The issue with not all of them, but some of them is, and this is uh, Bex is going to like this, is the problem is on your way up, you may have developed a prejudice against your own people, and no matter how hard you hold it in or how hard you try not to act out on it, if you don't deal with hatred, and I'm saying that that could be from trauma, right? I'm going to give them the same love that I give the brothers struggling out in the street. That could very well be trauma. You probably were mistreated by black people your entire life, called light skin, good hair, you talk white, all of that stuff, right? And in doing so, you thrived, but you didn't heal. And then when you see another black person, you can't relate to them on that same level because all you see, no matter what you try to do, is your trauma. This is the people group that turned their back on me. And if you don't deal with that, it's even I think it's even it can become even more insidious than just gatekeeping. Right. Because now you have hatred in your heart and you have in your mind justified hatred in your heart. And you got you have to deal with that. And this is this is for my black conservative friends. I will attack your ideas if they are not consistent. Same as a liberal. But I will also ask you, because I can't prove it, look inside your heart. Man. Why do you have to denigrate and put black people down if they are not showing the behaviors that you're talking about? Right? So, true, I, I'll concede to what you both have said tonight. The popular media shows this minority in the group. Unfortunately, this minority is committing the most. You know what I'm going with this. But what about the other brother that's getting up going to work nine to five, right? Whether he work at the bank, whether he work in the studios, why is he not or she not highlighted? Why is that part of the culture, the thriving part of our culture that still sustains? Because you have hatred in your heart and you can't see it, right? I, I never had an issue with Kevin Samuels. I had an issue with Kevin Samuel. Kevin Samuels stands, right? I believe that Kevin Samuels was a man from the South that had a lot of old school views and knew how to market them in a way that was going to get clickbaity titles. But at his core, every once in a while, you would hear him say something or someone would say something about him like he had this burden where he wanted to help his people. And we don't have to agree on his tactics. The issue is some of you guys who embrace the red pill and conservative talking points, you have hatred in your heart. And you're making the feminists right. You're mm-hmm. making them right because you can't let go of whatever perceived trauma on the no. If that applies, then let it apply. Deal with that. Your man, Kevin, 
said you need therapy before you do anything, right? <laughs> like start the healing process. And I think that's the problem with a lot of these conservative talking heads. They're either op opportunistic or they have, I believe, I can't prove it, there is hatred there. Mm. And he just will not let it go. He mm. won't deal with it. Yeah, that's good, bro. That's some good stuff. Yeah. I'm trying to get canceled. <laughs> hey, look. Goes back to the root. The hatred. It's, it's a root. <laughs> Everything has a root, bro. Everything that comes from somewhere. And so uh you you just you you hit the nail on the on the head, bro. Like um, we have to we have to I'm I'm in this emotional intelligence life coaching uh, course right now. And um, we have to start to self-identify right. with like why why do I believe what do I why I believe what I believe? Right. What 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 has transpired in my life to get me to this point? Is it healthy? Was it healthy? Am I healthy? Is my thinking healthy? I can't always be right. I know I'm not always wrong, but I can't always be right. So I need to be able to accept certain aspects of myself and say, you know what? I'm not right. And, you know, be able to uh, to divulge that to, to people vulnerably and be able to accept if they like it or don't like it. I'm walking in my what we call I'm walking in my truth, not the truth. But my truth is I come from South Central. Mom was on drug, single parent home, grandma raised me. All that impacts my emotional, um, the emotional way I see things, even as it pertains to history, even as it pertains to what's going on in the community. Right. All that stuff drives how I view everything else. And so right. in order for me to understand um, my myself, I got to look back at my past. And so that's all. Um, I heard you saying it's like we got to look at ourselves and be honest with ourselves about how we come to these places. Maybe it's my trauma. Maybe it's my drama. Or maybe it is, you know, Fox. Maybe it's CNN, CNN pushing it. You know, so I'm just like, I'm going to go I'm gonna go get this, you know, this money. And this way I'm going to get my money and take care of me, myself and I. Right. Whatever it is, you know, just own who you are. All right. If you're going to be that person, be that person and, and understand why you are that person. Say, well, I'm I'm this way because... Normandy and Vernon made me this way because the streets of Harlem made me this way because, you know, since the streets of Cincinnati made me this way. So that's why I think the way that I think I'm not saying that it's right. I'm saying this made me, this is how I got to. So until my world is, is brought in, this is where I'm at. So help me broaden my world. Let's come together and have conversations that matter. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then and then we'll be able to you know we'll, we'll all be able to grow because i've grown tonight and i thank you gentlemen i've grown in uh, my perspective and understanding and seeing things um in a way that's outside of the south central la california love you guys have really um brought in my, my my thought process and i appreciate you guys um for doing that tonight my brother, that's that's a perfect place to uh, to bring this to a close. Let me let DJ Cincy Star get his uh his uh his closing statement in there, and then uh you know we'll get the heck out of here. Uh, yeah, you know um, I I think everybody's uh, points tonight were great. This is definitely you know like you just said conversations that matter, important conversations that people should be having, uh, especially amongst ourselves, but also to a broader audience. Um, <clears throat> It, you know, it's just important. We can all learn from each other, even if we don't have the same uh, exact point of view or the same thoughts. If you're open to listening to other people, it only makes you more knowledgeable and only stronger as a group of people. Yeah, um, so you know, that's, that's what I've got to say. And I appreciate you having me on here. Appreciate being able to talk and meet with you, Alvin. It's been at a great time tonight. That's what I'm saying. And then here's a little African uh, history for you guys. At one point, deferring members of tribes would sit together, break bread, and make decisions, even though they had different views on where to hunt, where to do, where to, if they were nomadic. But even from those points, they would make a decision, and then the community would move forward. And I just, I think it's possible for us not to share the same viewpoint. I know it gets tough with things like uh, religion because you're going to land where you land, right? If you believe something is true, you're going to stick to what you believe is true. But if we're talking about moving in a community, 
then we have to have more conversations like this. And, uh, you know, someone's going to say inevitably, why weren't there any black women up there? Because that was not the conversation tonight. That's a conversation for another time. And we will more than happily have a sister up here. And it's no shade or no hate. It's your boy, Steve. Real name, no gimmicks. Conversations that matter. Alvin E. Cincy Star. Thank you for coming through. Peace. Peace.